My number six best chess game of the 2010s is Gelfand vs. Nakamura from 2010. Now, Hikaru has won quite a few amazing Kings Indian defense games in his career, and his game against Wesley So from 2015 in the U.S. Championships would also be a great candidate for one of the best games of the decade. However, this game is my favorite of Hikaru's Kings Indian defense wins, and I hope you enjoy it as well. We are going to get a boatload of Kings Indian defense theory here. We're not going to dive too deep into the theory because... I don't really know it. You have to be a specialist, but definitely Gelfand and Hikaru knew what was going on here. So after the very normal pawn d5 here, knight e7, we do get something a little different with knight d2, the third most popular move. More popular are knight to e1 and pawn to b4, the respective bayonet and Mar del Plata variations, some of the greatest variations in chess. This still has a lot of poison as well, of course. Now, Hikaru doesn't monkey around with anything that's trying to slow Gelfand down on the queen side. Instead, he plays the fourth most popular move, knight e8, and both sides are just going to commit to their respective sides of the board. Gelfand's going to come for it on the queen side. Hikaru is going to come for him on the king side. Whoever gets there first and best is going to win this chess game. So we get pawn to b4 here and pawn to f5. I'll talk a little bit about King's Indian defense um, strategic theory here, just a little bit, and say that here we have a classic pawn chain here with pawns on d6 and e5 for black, and then pawns on e4 and d5 for white. I'm not counting the other pawns in play because they're not yet locked into place. Those are the pawns that are locked that kind of define the structure. When you have uh, a pawn chain like this, you often want to attack in the direction that the pawns are pointing. And you also often want to find your most advanced pawn and advance the free pawn next to it. So for black, you want to advance with the F pawn because your most advanced pawn is the E pawn and you want to commit on the king side. For white, your most advanced pawn is the D pawn, the free pawn is the C pawn, and you want to expand there committing on the queen side. This is extremely established theory, but if you're new to the King's Indian defense, maybe you're just an E4 player, this should really help guide your understanding of the moves to come. So now pawn to c5 does come, we get knight f6, pawn f3, pawn f4, knight to c4 from Gelfand, g5. All of this is basically the most popular uh, selected moves in the position. This has all been played hundreds of times, rook f7, b5. And now because there is at this point a lot of pressure here on d6, we do see a move on the queen side from Hikaru. In general, you're trying not to move on the side of the board that your opponent's attacking on. So Hikaru doesn't want to make any moves on the queen side, and Gelfand doesn't generally want to make any moves on the king side. You're just trying to hang back and hope that your opponent doesn't land a good punch. Now, though, because of the pressure on d6, Hikaru does decide to take on c5, and the bishop recaptures. This means that there are more easy pawn breaks available for Gelfand, but still he's got a long way to go to break through. And when Gelfand breaks through on the queen side, he just maybe gets to promote a queen or win material or something. If Hikaru breaks through on the king side, he gets checkmate. So that's an important distinction between the white and black play in the king's Indian defense. So we continue here with pawn to h5 from Hikaru. And now pawn to a5 from Gelfand is the most popular move in the position but it doesn't have that great of a score, so I'm not actually sure that it's best. That said, it's really hard to know. I haven't spent days analyzing this position. Stockfish, I don't think, really knows too much about what's going on. So it seems like maybe King H1 could be a better move trying to hold on, but this is such a complicated game that until we let Alpha Zero loose on this position, I'm not sure we're fully going to know what's going on. And even then, Alpha Zero might be defeated. Chess is complicated. So after pawn to a5 here, we get g4. Hikaru is really initiating that attack on the king side, and pawn to b6 from Gelfand doing the same. Now pawn to g3, and so both sides have achieved, you know, that conflict as their pawns have kind of reached their destinations in the opposing camps. I want to mention here that, of course, what you'd kind of like to do as white is play pawn to h3 and just lock up the king side. There's nothing that's going to happen here. I'm not going to be checkmated. I'm safe behind my pawns. Of course, that's not true. And usually when you play a move like pawn to h3 in the king's Indian defense, 
There's going to be a sacrifice. There's one right here. You just have bishop takes h3, and if the bishop is captured, queen c8, and you're getting in over here. You can't do king g2 to hold h3 because of knight to h4 check. The queen comes in, and boom. Very, very nice stuff, of course. Also very traditional in the king's Indian defense. If you play it, you'll get these ideas regularly. So pawn to g3 happens. Now we get king to h1 here. I'll mention that taking this is not what black has in mind. If you take, then the king just sits on h1, and the pawn on h2 actually makes the king safer. So this tension remains. Neither player generally wants to make a capture with the g or h pawns. They want to leave that tension there. Neither wants to make that capture. So... The game continues now with bishop to f8. I'll mention that the computer and I think also some correspondence games have liked knight to h7 instead of bishop to f8, so that maybe there's an improvement there on the game, but really hard to say. After bishop f8, the point of which, by the way, is to get the rook some access to the g-file um, and to restrain uh, the play for white on the queen side, we do get pawn to d6, so Gelfond is breaking through, but again, when he breaks through, Maybe he promotes a pawn or wins some material. When Hikaru breaks through, it might be mate. So now we get A takes B6. The computer liked C takes B6. I'm just going to mention that, but I'm not going <laughs> to dive into a further analysis there. And now the bishop here is hit on C5. So the bishop actually just falls back, leaving the tension here, which is favorable to white at the moment. After the bishop falls back to G1, I'll mention again, you don't want to take on H2. It might seem like it's better here because you're attacking the bishop, but the bishop will just double back to f2, a classic King's Indian idea. And again, the king is surprisingly safe here on g1, and the pawn, an umbrella pawn, just gets in the way and doesn't help your attack. So after bishop g1, Hikaru just brings more pressure with knight to h4, and here's where Gelfand makes a mistake. This is kind of the critical moment, or one of the critical moments in the game. If you capture here on g3, h takes g3, um, f takes g3, and I mentioned you don't want to make those captures. You really don't want to make the capture here, but it seems like it's necessary at this point. Uh, bishop e3, it seems like white can hold on here. Now, if someone has a good analysis with you know some super powerful stockfish or Sessa or alpha zero, maybe you can find a win for black. But I didn't see it. It looks like bishop h3 could be crazy strong. Like, I'd be really tempted to play this. If I was playing white, I'd be terrified. I'd be like, I'm definitely getting checkmated. Definitely. But it seems like after rook g1, you can kind of just hold the position here. It's super weird. It doesn't feel like this king should be able to survive on h1. Again, maybe there is a way to get to it. But it seems like black's pieces actually get in the way on the h-file, and there's not a good way to get a queen or a rook to the h-file. And if you can't do that, maybe you're not breaking through after all. So maybe white can hold on in this super crazy irrational position. So after knight to h4 here, what Gelfand plays is rook to e1, and he must have just missed here. Knight takes g2. Boom thunderous move here and this is classic for the king's indian you're throwing everything at the opponent's king it is absolutely a kitchen sink attack you know stealing from that phrase where you're throwing everything uh including the kitchen sink at someone and here this is absolutely true you sacrifice the knight and the king just does not feel safe your pawns are threatening and the rook and the queen have the potential to enter now all of that said, Gelfand absolutely had to take the knight here. And again, it's not fully clear if you get a win. It looks good. Stockfish likes it. But is it absolutely a win? It's hard to say. The rook wants to go to g7 here, threatening discoveries that are crushing here. Um, if h3, for example, then queen d7, just a quiet move, forces mate actually because you're getting in over here. And otherwise, what do you do? Um, after rook g7, knight takes e5 is a computer recommendation. And it is hard to defeat this move, but it's also just really strong for black. You can take on h2. The king is forced to the h file, which feels very unsafe. And one crazy line that absolutely might not be the best is bishop takes d6, attacking that knight on e5. Bishop here defending um, h4 and also thinking about rook g1 to trade pieces. 
queen e8, putting more pressure on this because there was also a pin so the bishop couldn't capture on e5 last move. So now the knight's under attack, it can fall back. Queen g6 looks really strong, but then of course you have rook g1 contesting the g-file, and now knight g4 check, sacrificing another piece, produces this position. I could probably, and if I really wanted to be good about this, I probably should spend days analyzing this position, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to stop it here and say this is crazy and interesting. It's dangerous for white, but maybe white is not lost here. Um, and of course, there's so many other tries for both players. Again, hard to say if there was a win, but Gelfond just had to take this knight sacrifice on g2 and see if he could hold it. Instead, he took on c7 here, attacking the black queen, but Hikaru has an intermezzo. He can leave his queen hanging and does with knight takes e1. Absolutely beautiful. Of course, the point is, if you take the queen and make a queen, a gain of 17 points in a single chess move, which seems pretty great, you get checkmated with a pawn here on g2. I know a lot of people who think pawn checkmates are the best checkmates, and this is a nice one right here. So after knight takes e1, because of the threat and mate on g2, you don't have good choices. The queen captures on e1. Now g2 check, great move from Hikaru. He's coming uh, for the king on the g-file. He gets rook g7 check now, king h1. So the last couple of moves came with check, and it seems like now Hikaru finally has to deal with the attack on the queen, but bishop h3. You can leave the queen hanging again because, again, if the queen is captured, gaining 17 points in one move, bishop g2 is checkmate. It's not quite as nice as the pawn checkmate, but basically it's the same thing. So after bishop h3, the um, bishop falls back to f1 to cover the mate here, and Hikaru finds one final knockout blow here, queen to d3. He is hammering on this idea of mate on g2. He sacrifices the queen, but again, if you take the queen, we have the same checkmate. So after queen to d3, there's a hit here. There's an idea just to take on f1 and then take on c4. This is also under attack. Basically, Gelfand cannot avoid catastrophic material loss in this position. Of course, if you take the bishop over here, queen takes just forces mate right here. Gelfand plays the most resourceful move here. He does capture on e5, which attacks the queen and defends this, um, this pawn on f3, which seems really nice for a second, but bishop takes f1. Yet another queen sacrifice. I've not been counting, but this has to be like five or six queen sacrifices at this point, all for a very similar checkmate here on g2. So after bishop takes f1, since there's no time to take the queen, the queen captures, but that means that c3 hangs. Now, uh, at this point, Hikaru is up a rook. Gelfand wins a little material back by forcing promotion, but he loses the knight on e5 in the process. So in the end, he is down a piece, and after the move queen e6, he resigned, which of course makes perfect sense. This is the right moment to resign this amazing chess game. I hope that you enjoyed that fantastic attack from Hikaru as much as I did. Check out So vs. Nakamura from 2015 if you want to see another great King's Indian defense attack from Hikaru and Anand vs. Nakamura. He's really good in the King's Indian defense. And check out the playlist on the chessboard if you want to see more of my top 10 games of the 2010s. And as always, if you like the content, then a like or a subscribe or a comment would not go awry. Have a great day.